Whenever someone sets out to write something, many bad ideas inevitably come up. Case in point, Dorothy Gale competing in and winning an Oz singing competition by singing jazz, getting rid of Ben Stutter and It Chapter 1, and, like everything in the Phantom of the Opera screenplay, let's just be honest, why would Little Shop Forers be any different? I buy him presents, that's when he beats me. Exactly. I'm Josh Hoskinson, and this is Off the Cutting Room Floor. Episode 5, The Unwritten Ending. What have I done? What have I done? It seems like Lil Shop's ending was always a bit tricky to pin down and get right. Famously for the film, from the multiple drafts where the creatives decided whether or not Seymour survived to see the destruction he wrought, to the multiple cuts and slashes to the finale before it was decided to scrap it entirely. The musical's ending went through much less turmoil, following the same basic story and structure, with only the tone and details being tricky. From Howard Ashman's typed, undated outline for the libretto, Seymour offers Audrey roast beef, but the plant spits it out. It wants blood, and fast. Threatens to die before life gets there. Audrey comes in unexpectedly. She's worried about Seymour's nervous state. He tells her to stay away tonight, and that tomorrow, he'll be his old self again. Then, they'll go away together. Audrey leaves, and Audrey too, goes into a fast fade. From the first draft of the libretto to the musical's final bow on Broadway in 2004, the ending's been more or less the same in basic structure. Adapted, and I would like to make that very clear, this has been adapted, from Howard's preliminary outline for Little Shop's screenplay, the rest of the story goes as follows. The plant demands food. Seymour offers to run down to the grocery store and pick up some chopped meat as a stopgap meal. Audrey, too, is unimpressed, until it notices Audrey outside. The plant suddenly changes its mind, and Seymour exits to purchase the hamburger. Audrey approaches, still concerned about Seymour. The plant lures Audrey into the shop, pretending that it needs to be watered, until the girl's within grasping reach of the strongest branches. It contracts around her like a boa constrictor. She screams and struggles as it begins pulling her inside. Seymour flings open the door, sees what's happening, drops the meat to the floor, and rushes to extract Audrey from the jaws of death. He finally forces the pod open, and Audrey collapses. In her death scene, Audrey forgives Seymour for his sins and makes a suggestion. Feed her to the plant, so it will bring him all the wonderful things he deserves. When she completes her quasi-operatic demise... Audrey expires, and the plant opens its pod to receive her. Seymour carries his lost love to her resting place, accompanied by swelling strings. Seymour begins a series of attempts on the plant's life. He has predictable results, and ends up sacrificing himself in his attempt to save humanity. As the show comes to a close, the girls begin singing the cautionary last number, which tells the tale of humanity's destruction. The final few scenes took many different forms, from the inclusion of the original Feed Me and The Plant Who Loves You as Audrey too begs for blood, with and without Will Have Tomorrow as Seymour reassures Audrey that everything will be okay, All Gone's Tale of Destruction being replaced with the warning of Don't Feed the Plants. From the first draft, it always followed the same basic story. After all, it's Faust. Seymour makes a deal with the devil, and at the end, despite his best efforts, he must pay the price the life of his one true love. And Audrey, sweet, innocent Audrey, to quote the final draft of the screenplay, goes out in a blaze of angelic selflessness, sacrificing her body and her life so her beloved can have the life she knows he deserves. For a brief moment, however, that wasn't how the story went. Remember that undated typed outline for the libretto I mentioned? The plant tells Seymour he needs fresh blood, and wants Audrey's. Seymour refuses flatly, but as Audrey too shows signs of serious wilting, and Audrey, the girl, comes back for her handbag, the question is finally brought to a head. He'll lose everything unless Audrey too eats Audrey one. 
The plant keeps coaxing him. Audrey 1 stands too close, and Audrey 2 grabs her. Audrey screams for help. Seymour has to make a decision. He stands by and lets Audrey 2 strangle Audrey 1. When she's dead, he feeds her to the plant. Then he asks, What have I done? Eventually, likely as he got a better handling on the characters and story as the musical developed, Howard decided against this. And, at an early reading for the BMI Lehman Angle Musical Theater Workshop, defended his decision to have an unhappy, tragic ending, saying, Seymour chooses good. Seymour tries to destroy the plant, and to me, that's the happy ending. But, wait, doesn't he still die, though? But who cares if you win or lose? He tried to do it. He tried to conquer. This has been Off the Cutting Room Floor. The voice of Howard Ashman was Davis, host of the Jacks of Trades podcast. Follow Jacks of Trades on Twitter at Jacks Trades Pod. The voice of Seymour was Ryan, host of the Rumor Flies podcast. Follow Rumor Flies on Twitter at Rumor Flies. Opening and closing theme, Always Slept So Soundly, is by Sarasu, off the EP Domestications. They can be found at soundcloud.com slash Sarasu, and on Twitter, at Sarasu Music. Got corrections? Want to get in touch? Shoot me a message at Joss Hosky on Twitter. The show at OTCR Room Pod everywhere. Or send an email to cuttingroompod at gmail.com. Like the show? Share it with your friends or leave a rating on your podcatcher of choice. Want to support the show and what I do? Become a patron at patreon.com slash Joss Hosky. Sources for this episode can be found in the show notes. To find transcripts and any corrections, visit cuttingroompod.tumblr.com. And hey, thanks. What have I done? What have I done? Oh, no!